right. So the first one, Kyle, if you don't mind, I don't know if I sent it to you in this order, but if we could start with the two studies say something different about the brain talking about. So in this one, I actually read each uh, article separate before okay. I saw this headline from Discover. And the first headline was that you can't make new brain cells, uh, neurogenesis, like you can't make them after like childhood. Watch me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then the other study said the exact opposite. Okay. So here we go. Bear with me here. So the real question is, do older brains make new neurons or not? That's basically what it comes down to. And so we all make new cells in our bodies like tissue, because as you grow from a wee lad to an older person, you will be making new cells all the time, as well as when you heal, like get cut or anything, you're always making new cells. But the question in this case is, are you making new brain cells, mm -hmm. like neurons and things, because that affects a lot more than the, not meaningless, but silly things like growing and healing, like the minor things. Yeah, that sure. affects a lot more serious things. So the first researchers, they, um, they came from University of California, and they found that in the hippocampus, it's a region in your brain mm -hmm. that is involved with memory, learning, one of the key parts that controls your body and part of your brain. So they're looking at this one to see, is your brain still making new brain cells? And what they concluded was that the... Um, the University of California people concluded that, no, that you don't. They concluded that after you reach adulthood, after the childhood age, your hippocampus is not making new neurons. It's all downhill. Basically, yes. Okay. And then the other group came from the University of Columbia, and they said that the hippocampus does, in fact, make new neurons, new brain cells throughout our lifespan. Basically saying the same exact thing. Wait, the same or what opposite? The yeah, same, exactly. Or, oh, right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, did I did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so are these two research groups They're kind of saying the fight? opposite thing. They're gonna get exactly. that broad. So the University of California said that no, we don't make new brain cells. Okay. And the University of and then from Columbia University they said the hippocampus does make new neurons. So one said no and one said yes. Okay. So, so then I decided is... to read this article. <laughs> yeah. So I read them separately, and I was like, I'm not really sure how I'm going to break this one down. Right. But then Discover had a nice little article. And <laughs> what they said was that what probably ended up happening was that it's hard. They said it's hard to search for neurogenesis, which is the process of making new brain cells. Mm -hmm. And the way you have to do about to go about doing it is an indirect way. And they said in a roundabout way, something like looking for protein markers mm -hmm. where they're a part of the process to make a new neuron that you'll have like these protein markers as a byproduct. So it's not a direct way of imaging a neuron, but it's a way to tell that there's neurogenesis, a process of making new neurons going on. Okay. So... That's the one thing, it's tough, and it's just a difficult thing to do in and of itself. Number two, they also think it's from different samples. So when you're getting a brain sample, how do you get a brain sample? How do you come across somebody's brain, right? You gotta donate it to science, right? And a lot of times, people who do it are people, who, like when they want a younger brain to study, right? They don't want somebody who died of natural age at 80. The one research group who found, who didn't find that you were making new cells, their samples were from people who actually committed suicide, who also had drug and alcohol related problems. Mm. And then the other group had it from somebody who had just like a terrible car accident and their brain was donated to science. So the article went in depth explaining that it might really be a difference in their samples that played a kind of a large role in the actual brain that they were studying. Mm -hmm. So the first point, it's really hard to figure out in the first place. Number two, they think their samples were quite different, and it's kind of hard to just get brains of the ages that you want to study on. Right. And basically, we're going to need more repeat studies to see how the brain does come up with new neurons and how it all really works. That they don't really have a good, solid answer right now. That their best thing was that they think that different samples and that they need to continue the research. So this is unresolved. Pretty much kind of unresolved. Okay. 
but kind of cool because I read each of these headlines individually and I was like, I thought I read it wrong. I was like, wait, what? Because the one just said that. And then, right. So the one said, yes, they do. The other one said, no. And we need some further research. So do you think, Tom, that these two research groups should fight, <laughs> should fight each other to the death? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so I was reading the chat. I was right, like, where right. are you going? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. But yeah. no, this, this strikes me as like, I'm actually surprised not more research conclusions come to this sort of a head where, where like one says this and the other one says right. it's the other way because it sort of seems like uh a lot of these experiments really are, that are on kind of like the cutting edge of of what we're studying um really sort of push the envelope of what they're drawing as a conclusion from from the research that they're that they're mm -hmm. garnering and um in this particular case it feels like there is solid evidence for both the one aspect where it's like, okay, we are, you know, people are making new brain cells as they get older. And then there's, there's pretty solid evidence for the but contrary. They really aren't. And so I think it might be somewhere in between where it is kind of complicated, depending on the individual, depending on what happens to them. Like, um, well, first of all, I want to go to the chat real quick. Sure. Yeah. Evil Panda said he just saw our rules, really likes them, 10 out of 10 rules. Awesome. <laughs> and then KMK in the chat said, if the brain doesn't get new neurons, how do people recover from strokes? So that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. From what I've read the most about, I think it more has to do with uh, brain plasticity of how there can be some minor changes within existing neurons and sort of creating minor new pathways in the brain almost, as opposed to your brain actually making brand new fresh neurons to replace what might be damaged ones okay as as far as i know but as this research goes on i mean i'm, I'm sure they're gonna come up with a better explanation to how your brain will recover from things like that yeah so that's a good question to ask because that's going to lead to further understanding uh strokes and things like that hmm. cool very interesting and then blue pox 339 says a hey. hey what up <laughs> that's pat oh way. what's up yeah <laughs> Um, cool. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. that was with me. story numero uno for this, me. <laughs> yeah, that might be the first. That's probably the first story we've ever covered where like there was the, no just like <laughs> yeah. this is what we found. Yeah, right? it's still like hotly debated uh, research. Very interesting. Pal. Cool. Blue Pox said my grandma had a stroke three years ago, and that's kind of exactly how the doctors explained it to them about how you recover. So I did learn something when I read things. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> Very 